Michael and I were extremely lucky to have had Greg as both an older brother and as a role model. He's probably had a greater influence on us than anyone else has ever had. Despite being young, he had achieved so much in such a short period of time, and he was always striving to accomplish something more. But today, we don't want to talk about his achievements. We'd rather say a few words about what he was like and the kind of impact that he had on all of us, because that's what really matters. <clears throat> Greg was one of my three older brothers. Being both the youngest and the only girl, it wasn't always easy. But I found comfort knowing that I had three big brothers to protect me. Among the three, Greg took this job the most serious. He was always making sure that I was in a good place, both mentally and physically, and was always checking to make sure that I was headed in the right direction. Greg often emphasized how I should surround myself with good people and how it's better to have few friends leading you in a direction towards success than to have many that might be dragging you down. One of the last talks that we managed to have, he mentioned that no matter how small my circle of friends got, he would always be there as both a brother and a true best friend. Greg had also become one of my greatest influences because he had his priorities set straight. If I had to narrow it down, it would ultimately come down to his health, his faith, his education, his work, and above all, family. He loved to spend time with us, and he made this very clear. Greg was also so much more than just a police officer. He was always curious and wanted to learn as much as he possibly could. Once he got hooked on something, he would dedicate so much time and effort towards it. This enthusiasm in learning led him to develop several different hobbies and interests, which is a side of him that I had the privilege of getting to know. He loved art. It was a pain to go to museums with him because he could stare at a single painting all day. He would tell me about his plans to dedicate a whole room in his future house where he could go and stare at artwork after a long day. He liked to dance. Whenever we were at an event and he saw that I wasn't dancing, he would take me by the hand and lead me straight to the dance floor. Although he may have not been the greatest dancer, the effort was surely there. He loved being in nature. He spent lots of his time off going on long trips to Algonquin, where he would completely disconnect from the world. It was there that he found lots of peace. Greg even developed an interest in gardening. He would send me a bunch of random pictures of all the bushes and flowers that he would plant, and I still remember him being so proud of it. We would take trips to the greenhouse together, and he would spend what felt like hours looking at all the descriptions, just trying to learn more. Although I may not have found it as interesting, he didn't really care at the time because he got to pursue his interests and at the same time, spend time with me. Greg's wisdom is something that particularly stood out to me. When he came home, he'd often ask me the classic question, how was school? What would typically be a five minute conversation turns into an hour long meeting debriefing everything I've done in school. 
He would give me his opinions and offer me with an insight that I would have never seen before. He would then spend another hour giving me life advice, which will always stick with me. Greg became one of my greatest teachers, and I can't even imagine how much more I could have learned. Greg died a hero, and he lived as an inspiration. I may have not said it often, but I love you, Greg, and you'll always be my big brother. Being Greg's younger brother, I got to know a slightly different side of him. Now, Greg was truly an outstanding and moral person but it would be a mistake to think that it was always easy for him to be like this, or that he couldn't help but be a good person all the time. It took him plenty of effort and deliberation to become the virtuous person that we all knew. The reason I'm saying this is because he once told me about a turning point that caused him to reevaluate his own character and it changed the course of his life. He was around 13 years old, and he'd made friends with the wrong group of kids, and they all got themselves into some trouble. Luckily, a strict teacher had pulled him aside and firmly told him that he was on the wrong path and that he was wasting his potential. For whatever reason, Greg took this extremely seriously, and he later told me that this is where he consciously decided to become the respectable and honest person that he'll be remembered as. It wasn't an easy thing for him to do, but it was worth doing as he had a positive impact on so many people's lives because of it. He was humble, generous, funny, and competent. But I think what really separated him from others were his high standards for everything in his life. He was obsessed with excellence, doing things right, and he always wanted things to be as good as they could be. He liked exercising, so a few months ago he ran the Hamilton Marathon. He loved to read, so he'd buy so many books that they'd pile up in his room faster than he was able to read them. Now, these high standards weren't always such a good thing, as unfortunately for me, he'd really let me know if my room wasn't clean. And because he was like this, it wasn't an easy thing to make him proud, and he could be judgmental. But it was never crushing either, because when you did do something right, he'd let you know. And it would mean the world, because it came from him, and you knew that you must have really hit the mark if it was something that Greg appreciated. Greg was the most courageous person I knew. He was always doing challenging things that he was afraid of. But courage, it's not about never being afraid. It's about doing the right thing despite being afraid. And Really, it's a defining quality of all the police officers that are willing to risk their lives for us every day. Greg was very aware of the risks of the job, but he did it nonetheless. He would come home every week to spend time with the family, and when it was time for him to go back to work, he always made sure that he said a proper goodbye to everyone in the family. For me, He'd barge into my room with a grin on his face, and he'd give me a nice, firm handshake. And sometimes it was over the top and exaggerated, but it was really important to us, and I'm glad that he did that. When I was preparing for this, I was thinking of all the significant things we had done together, the big trips and special events and celebrations but it was really these sorts of day-to-day -day interactions, like those handshakes, that really stuck out to me for some reason. And I think it's because 
since you do them all the time, they're really the bulk of what make up relationships. And though they became habit, I'm really glad that I appreciated the little things and cherished the seemingly trivial time that I spent with him because it was so valuable. Over the last few days, I've spoken to a lot of people that knew Greg well, and there was this common thing that some people would say that I thought was true as well. It was that Greg had this really unique effect of inspiring you to become more. I remember thinking, oh, Greg just bought flowers for our mom after working out for two hours, after finishing a 12-hour shift. I should probably go do something today. <laughs> See, the special thing about Greg, it wasn't just that he made your life better directly through his actions. It was also that through the example he set, he made you want to be a better person. He made you want to make your own life better. And I can't think of a better influence than someone can have than that. To finish, I'd like to read a quote written by the great Charles Dickens. This is a quote that had some meaning to Greg and that I believe is fitting. I see a beautiful city and a brilliant people rising from this abyss. I see the lives for which I lay down my life, peaceful, useful, prosperous, and happy. I see that I hold a sanctuary in their hearts and in the hearts of their descendants, generations hence. It is a far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done. It is a far, far better rest that I go to than I have ever known. <laughs>